Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Chapter 7, Section 1 of Sergey Lang's basic, basic Mathematics. In this section, we're going to learn about area. We're not going to learn what area is. We're just going to learn about it, which sounds really weird. So uh, he starts off, he, he's going to assume some basic properties of area. Basically that, uh, you know, if you, if you have uh, the area of a square of side A is A squared. So area of a square of side A. So area of square with side A is A squared, okay? Uh, it's, it's kind of an assumption that says that that is. And, and then he says the rectangle with sides A comma B has an area equal to AB, okay? He just kind of assumes this. He doesn't really talk about why that is or why it works that way. He goes, a, a, a very curious thing happens though. Let's say we have this rectangle BA and then we double B uh, double B and then we double A, right? So we have 2A here, 2B. What should be the area of this thing? And we notice that one of these A, B rectangles fits here, another one fits here, and indeed we can fit four of these guys. So the area of a, so the area of a twice rectangle equals four times the area of a single rectangle. Okay, so by doubling the area, we're uh, doubling the lengths, we're quadrupling the areas. Okay, and if we did three, I don't know what that would look like. It looks something like this, right? So we had three. So tripling the sides will give you nine times the area. Okay, all right. Okay. And it should make sense why that is. So let's take a really quick gander at the, the rectangle here. This is 3A, 3B, which is equal to 3 squared AB, right? And this is 2A times 2B, which is 2 squared AB. So as you can see, the, the doubling is squared and the tripling here is squared. And that's why you get 9 and 4, respectively. All right. Not terribly complicated stuff. Hopefully this isn't a big surprise for you. Okay. All right. So in general, if you have a rectangle with sides A, B, the area of that rectangle is A, B, and then if you, have, if you multiply it by R, the sides by R, you're going to get R, A times R, B, which is R squared A, B, okay? So you're going to get R squared rectangles when you mul multiply the sides by length R, by dilation of R, okay? Um, the uh, it makes a lot of sense that you can take any region of space and cut it up into a bunch of rectangles, right? So if I have some region here, and I have some rectangles that are some arbitrary, you know, size, I can cut that region of space up into rectangles and count what area that is. Uh, and so, if we want to count things that aren't rectangles, there's a way to do that. Let's suppose that we have a disk and we want to know the area of that disk right and this disk has a radius r okay the area of this disk is really hard to calculate and we'll talk a second about how you can actually do this um, but if we assume that there is another disk with radius one we call this d1 okay then this disk of dr is going to equal r squared times d1, right? And if we say that the area of this d1 is pi, then the area of a disk of radius r is equal to r squared pi, or pi r squared. And the reason why we're doing this is because we assume that you can cut this up into rectangles, right? And by, by scaling the shape by a factor of r, then that means we're going to have r squared as many rectangles in the new shape. All right. Now, how do you calculate pi? There's a section on here that talks about how to calculate pi. I'm not going to go into that. It's very interesting, but we're not going to do that. Um, and when you do calculus, there's actually a really elegant way to calculate pi, but we're not going to cover that. There is, however, something interesting. And I can't possibly draw this, but suppose you had a perfect circle. 
okay? And then you take and you, you draw really carefully or you use like a, a very good set of graph paper. I should have gotten a piece of graph paper. I'll just kind of sketch it out here. And then we're gonna go vertically here with squares. I am remarkably good at this. I deserve some kind of prize. Okay. Now what you can do is you'll notice that some of these rectangles are whole. These ones are whole. So I'm gonna mark off the ones that are whole. And this works for any arbitrary shape, not just um, uh, circles. I think this one's, are, this one's not quite all the way in there. These ones are, this one is, and these are not quite. This one is cut off in the corner, but that one's in there. And this one's in there. Okay. So we have these ones that are definitely on the inside. Okay. And then we, we look at this, and, and if we zoom in here, we see that it's kind of passing through these guys, right? And so the question is, how much area does this use, right? And the answer is, well, it's going to be somewhere between this and let's use a different color here. Let's use an orange. I don't know if orange will show up well. But these squares... have the line running through it. Oh, it's got to go through. I guess it's going to go perfectly through that, that corner. Uh, this one, that one, this 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 one. Okay. So at most, the area is going to be the pink ones and the yellow ones. And at worst or at smallest, it's going to be just the pink ones. And so we know it lies somewhere in between those. And if if you think about it, we, we can go into each of these squares and we can cut them up into smaller squares, right? And then we can count those smaller squares and we can say, well, well, these ones all lie perfectly inside. This one, not quite. And these ones don't. And so we know that the area uh, that this thing is actually on the inside is somewhere around 0.75, maybe larger than 0.75. So it's between 1 and 0.75, right? Uh, whereas in this one, if we cut this guy up into smaller bits, let's cut this guy up into smaller bits. Uh, 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 uh. And again, my, my squares are not quite perfect. So we know that this guy is inside, 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 inside. This is not, this is definitely not inside. This is on, 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 on. Okay, so the area that it covers here is at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And at most, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So at most 13 squares of those 16, right? And, and, and minimum 7. And it, you can go in with smaller and smaller uh, squares until you actually get the actual shape. And this doesn't work just for circles, but it works for any, any um, shape, okay? Now, another thing that um, we, we note is that when the line, so we have a square, and that circle kind of curves right through it, right? Okay, so the, the point, any point on the square is at most C times the square root of 2 from the circle, right? So um, the, the, cir the squares have the length C there, right? And uh, the diagonal of such a square has C square root of 2. So the length of this diagonal is C times the root of 2, right? And that should come because of Pythagoreans there. That's pretty obvious there. Okay. So any point on the square is at most C root of 2 away from the center, right? Because that's the furthest you can get. So if I'm over here in the furthest corner, right, I'm at most C root of 2 from the circle. Okay. I can't get any further than that. Okay. So this, uh, uh, so if we draw a band of width, so we take the, the circle shape and then we draw a band of width like this, where the distance here is c root of 2, right? So it's c root of 2, it's 2 c root of 2 wide, right? So the area of this band is at most, the area of this band is 2 times c root of 2 uh, times the length of the circle, right? So if you use smaller and smaller squares, you can get closer and closer to having that line not cross through any squares that are too small, okay? That are too close, okay? 
Uh, and this works for smaller shapes as well. In fact, this is the beginnings of, of calculus. If, if, you're, if you're going to study calculus, this kind of thinking is the direction that calculus goes. So the exercises are interesting. I don't want to uh, spend too much time um, going over it, but uh, there's a bunch of exercises. And take your time, enjoy them. They're kind of fun. They're not very hard. This isn't very hard thinking. This is just like, hey, let's draw some shapes and let's see what happens when we multiply things. Anyway, guys, thanks for your time. Take care and bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is part of a series on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can catch the playlist over here, and you can find out how to support my channel over here. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.